On the run from my given disaster Speed away from the holy mind Pride That's where I never thought it would matter If I'm gone by now Keep on driving and driving along the roads and never end. Lost my head of Hilma's back between the jars and bottle jug. Just me and all the red lights. Yeah. Keep on driving and driving. So, on this uh, sheet of paper here in front of you, uh, these four bottles of whiskey on that, uh, this is what High West calls its core form. They're the first four whiskeys we ever released. Um, these are really close to the map. They make a nice flight because you've got four distinct styles of whiskey next to each other uh, that you can prepare as you walk through. If almost any other room in the state, this would be entirely illegal. Uh, because <laughs> the, the rule in Utah is when you come to a place to drink, um, really you're allowed one glass of any cheaper liquor or alcohol for any other time. I've had to finish and remove or uh, if you imagine trying to talk to Utah and letting us build the first distillery here in 130 years, it's hard. <laughs> that they were pretty cooperative about. Uh, but when it came time to talk to them and doing flights, that took us about three and a half years to pull off. Oh. And the result is, they call this an educational tasting license. <laughs> uh, so the idea is, as long as you can say you've learned something, um, and they actually don't really specify what that has to be. Um, then you suddenly can double fist it. So it's <laughs> something we're rather proud of. And, and to that end, um, the first thing really to know about whiskey is that whiskey is distilled beer. So ultimately, you start out as a beer brewery. In fact, that's really what half of that room with all the windows across the way is, is a brewery. Um, ultimately, the definition of whiskey, and it started with this, Basically, whiskey is just beer that you distill, that you concentrate. Um, for most of its history, that's all it was. Um, but starting somewhere around the early 1800s, uh, this idea of taking your distilled beer and then letting it sit in oak barrels that have the inside heavily charred out became the standard thing to do. Um, somebody figured out um, that if you set the inside of the barrel on fire, um, all of a sudden you get all this additional flavor. Uh, out of the wood. And so it's now part of the definition. Um, so essentially the definition of whiskey is it's distilled beer that's been flavored with oak. So it's um, only far as that all began, but um, eventually this idea when it got out of the hands of the monks, the folks who picked it up next were the farmers throughout Europe. And so they just distilled anything that had grown on a farm. And as a result, today you can make whiskey with any grain you for example, in Thailand, uh, they'll make whiskey with rice. Uh, I've been watching people claim they're making whiskey out of quinoa. I'm sure it's really healthy on the liver. Now here in the here in North America, the whiskey makers here became known for two grains in particular, rye and corn. The style of corn whiskey. We call it corn. Uh, and so, of course, whiskey is the umbrella term. Uh, bourbon's a style of whiskey, and it's a protected style in that there are several rules you have to follow in order to put bourbon on the label. And the first major rule is that you have to make bourbon in the United States. And, uh, I smell caramel apple. Anything, unless the call we can't be the done, it's, it's that sweetness that that is. Honey. I do um, smell like a cornbread type of thing. There's a candy corn, but. I don't smell the candy. This is the spiciest yeah, rye whiskey in the world. Oh, I do. I do smell. Oh, I smell the clove. The clove and cinnamon. I don't really smell the licorice. A little bit of mint. Eucalyptus. Yeah, I don't smell the licorice, but I don't like licorice to make it. That's why I don't smell it. This is the rendezvous rye. And... 
I smell persimmon, apricot, uh, spicy caramel, walnut. I guess it's a little bit of a ginger zing. I don't smell the snickerdoodle. Um, the cedar, I could, notes of cedar, but no snickerdoodle. I like the other ones better. Oh! <laughs> oh, it's so, it smells like an uh, ashtray. <laughs> I wasn't off though. <laughs> Accurate. I don't think I can. I let's see if I can try to get other things in it. it oh, I just can't. Was it in the aisles in Scotland? Because they do a lot of PD stuff in the aisles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have that one aisle for Isla. Yeah, Isla. Is that where it's from? So the campfire, even though I did not, I don't like the smell of it, you can tell that it's blended because you can smell a little bit of the vanilla from the bourbon blended in. You can smell the scotch from the aisles and that's the smoke and the peat. And you can smell the caramel and the butterscotch, which is from the rye whiskey and that's like the typical whiskey smell. So you can, once you sit with it, even though the smoke and the peat is intense, if you sit there, you can smell all the layers. Okay. Oh, you can smell that. You smell a lot of the same things, but it's, it's sweeter. It's, it's not like a spiced caramel, it's more of a regular caramel. Oh, you can really smell it, this is sweeter. Persimmon, caramel. We tend to do that, but when we finish whiskeys like this, we let them sit in something else. Um, they tend to fall on the higher proof because the idea yeah, of very caramely, very caramely. I can't believe they shared this limited edition rendezvous rye in a cognac barrel. Yeah, this is really, really nice. I guess I can, I can taste a little bit from that as well. It's really like a macadamia, like a really smooth nut. Yeah, this is nice. This is nice. Hopefully they'll make more of it. Who your blend master is? Her name's Tara. That's kind of unusual. Uh, most of, actually most of our women team is female. Oh wow! And, Yay. Um, as a generalization, um, women tend to have a much better palate. Um, mm -hmm. With a few exceptions, um, our founder David Perkins, he's a super case, but he has a name. is the High West General Store, and fun fact, you can buy what they call hooch on Sunday in Utah, which is kind of unheard of. It was vanilla-y, caramel-y, and had so many very soft notes. So I'm going to get the American Prairie Bourbon. Very caramel-y. All the High West Distillery. That's where they do some blending and that's where they make the whiskey. Well, well, this has been my time at the High West Distillery and learned all about their whiskeys, which are really different from each other. I highly recommend you coming here, checking it out for yourself. And if you loved this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment what you'd love to see me do next time. Remember, you totally rock!